So we can start now. Um, hi, uh, this talk is about how to create um, beautiful cloud native landscapes. So my name is uh, Christian Behrendt. I'm working with OpenStack for um, over 10 years. And um, we are 23 Technologies. We were founded in uh, 2021 by myself. Um, we are cloud native experts located here in uh, Germany. And um, we partnered um, around half a year um, ago with um, Cloira, previously known as um, City Network, to build and run their managed Kubernetes um, service that should be available soon, um, we hope so. <laughs> And um, we are also preparing um, managed Kubernetes for um, some other CSPs here in, in Europe. And we are also um, working together with um, Audi and Bosch and Trumpf and um, some other bigger companies in the Stuttgart area um, on software-defined manufacturing um, to be able to bring um, cloud-native technology to the, um, to the OT, to, to shop floors and so on. Um, this talk about um, is about where are we today about cloud native um, workload and that is normally running today on uh, a kubernetes layer that is running on an infrastructure as a service layer um, sometimes openstack um, sometimes um, other solutions um, sometimes based on openstack but normally on top of an infrastructure as a service layer and there's a problem so the problem is that we want to deploy um, a lot of um, different cloud native workloads and there are a lot of ways to deploy the cloud native workloads on top of an, an Kubernetes layer. And there are also many ways to deploy and maintain and to operate um, Kubernetes, which runs on infrastructures that are all different. And the, the problem is now that it's really, really hard for an, um, an user of an application to provide their um, software on top of a Kubernetes that is different everywhere. And we, we, we tackled this, this issue sometimes, and then we decided to found the company to make this easier. And um, we, we try to make um, happy users in the end so that an operator can deploy their, their workload, their applications on uh, top of the same uh, Kubernetes um, everywhere. So our goal is that we provide an, an Kubernetes cluster that looks the same um, on any infrastructure out there. And to be able to do this, um, we choose to um, use um, Kubernetes as a service layer, as a layer between the infrastructure and the Kubernetes cluster, so that we do not deploy directly the Kubernetes cluster with some tooling like um, COPS or Cube ADM or something like this on top of the infrastructure. So we have a control plane between and Kubernetes as a service that manage the infrastructure in a universal way. Um, so that the infrastructure is um, still different, but that's fine now because um, the, the now happy user does not see the underlying infrastructure. And to be able to do this, um, we use an, an universal Kubernetes at scale um, developed by um, SAP as an open source project. Um, it's called Gardner. Um, the, the target of, the, of Gardner is um, to establish a control plane that is multi-cloud aware so that you can um, deploy Kubernetes clusters on um, a lot of different infrastructure as a service um, on-premise and off-premise on multiple clouds, on Ali Cloud, AWS, on Azure, Google, Hetzner, Equinix, OpenStack, Bare Metal, VMware, it doesn't matter in the end. Um, so that the um, Kubernetes clusters look the same everywhere, so that the um, workload doesn't know the underlying infrastructure. And it's based on infrastructure resources provided by the um, infrastructure um, providers, so that you have to use uh, standard resources. We, we like, do not rely on AKS or EKS or something like this. Um, we simply deploy um, our own uh, VMware resources, our own um, network resources, or our own storage resources on Ubuntu or on Garden Linux or on CoreOS, and then um, we run an, um, a control plane um, on top of this. And this way, um, we are able to manage um, um, thousands of clusters with one um, solution so that we have a fleet management with a minimal TCO. So it's possible to operate um, thousands of clusters in the end with uh, uh, one FTE. And um, this makes it possible that a small CSP can offer a high-quality managed Kubernetes service um, without um, 
yeah, the, the, the hassle to, to implement it itself with um, Terraform or Ansible or something like this. How does it look like? Um, we have a central gardener control plane that is running somewhere. It can be on the same infrastructure, it can be on another infrastructure. Um, so it's just in Kubernetes cluster, um, which um, has the, the API server for the gardener itself, the dashboard and so on. And then uh, we have infrastructure providers, yeah, for example, AWS. And for each region, you deploy a so-called um, seed plane. And the seed plane has the control plane for the so-called shoot clusters. So a shoot cluster is in the end a Kubernetes cluster for a customer. They can access the um, um, shoot clusters via the um, um, cube config and can do what they want to do there. And the um, seed plane um, has the API server and the every required service by the um, Kubernetes. And, and this way, it's possible to have a an, an, an shared uh, a control plane for a lot of cl clusters. So you normally have around um, 200 clusters for each seed plane. And they, this way, the regions are independent from each other. So when the control plane dies or one of the region dies, it does not affect the other running um, seed planes. Or when a shoot cluster dies, it does not affect other clusters. So in the end, you can spawn a lot of um, uh, shoot clusters that can be consumed by your customers, and then you, they can run their workload on, on top of it. And this is also possible to make an, an, an hybrid um, uh, deployment. So the seed plane, for example, we have a public demonstrator of um, the gardener there the seed plane is running on the Azure cloud, and the shoot nodes are running on the Hetzner cloud. So you can combine um, different um, cloud environments to, um, to have different SLAs or to have an, an on-premise control plane and off-premise clusters to allow a bursting that when you um, have a large OpenStack environment on your side and then you want to spawn additional resources in the AWS cloud, then you can do this um, by simply adding a new um, cloud profile to the, to the control plane. Uh, the insight is that you have on the control plane running all of the required um, um, Kubernetes um, services like the API server or the scheduler or the controller or the manager inside a um, Kubernetes cluster itself. And this is the um, so-called um, seed cluster. And on top of the seed cluster, you add then um, additional services required um, to spawn the uh, shoot clusters so that you can um, control the underlying infrastructure via Kubernetes itself, via the meshing controller, via the auto scaler, and, and so on. And this way, oh, this is, the slide is broken. <laughs> yeah, and then you can attach to the, the seed cluster now contains the control plane for a um, shoot cluster, and the shoot cluster is, um, the workers for um, a customer. And you can um, simply um, attach then the worker clusters to the shoot, to the seed clusters, and then you have a so-called shoot cluster. And the shoot cluster is then for the, for the customer, and the, the shoot cluster cannot access the seed cluster. So this way it's safe that um, the customers can only control the things that are running on the shoot cluster and on the workers, and they cannot um, join other customers and, or, or something like this via the seed cluster. And then you can control everything with, um, with via the Gardner cluster API on top of this, via an API or via an UI, or you can simply um, write a cube manifest and um, define your Gardner cluster there and um, can then spawn your Kubernetes clusters. And this is the central entry point for the um, users or uh, uh, for the CI processes or, or stuff like this. Okay, so this is the end of the presentation. We have, um, I think, a few minutes left, so we can have a short um, demonstration when my um, internet connection is working. <laughs> Hopefully not like the, the last time. So I have to check. Um, Yeah, so this is the, um, the login. So I have no mirror screen. So 
You can simply log in there via um, um, GitHub. So there is a DEX proxy, so you can integrate um, whatever you want. And then you can access the um, UI of the um, um, gardener. And that's all in the end what you can see there. So you have um, um, clusters running somewhere. And here you can see um, where it is running. This is the so-called um, cloud profile. And here you see the versions and the querying readiness and the heals of the cluster. And there is one um, dialogue um, to create new clusters. And, and here you can see um, the different um, cloud profiles, for example, for AWS or Azure or Google or um, some OpenStack-based cloud. So you can add simply your, say, ah, here's the Keystone endpoint. I have um, this and this image and those flavors available. And then you can just click together your cluster. You can also do this via um, um, a cube config file. So you just have this definition and then you can give this to the Kubernetes API server of the gardener. And then you can spawn the, the cluster. And that's all in the end. So we can now, so I have to, to move a little bit to see it. <laughs> ah, it's not so easy. Uh, yeah, something is. Yeah, it does not work this way, so I cannot see anything here. Um, but, but you just have to, 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 you can just create this cluster then. And in, in the back end then, there's running a reconciliation process. So it creates the um, required control services in a namespace in the um, um, seed plane. It spawns the um, um, Kubernetes API service and, and so on and so on. And then it will start to create the um, required infrastructure resources on the um, um, specified cloud profile. And it will then attach the um, infrastructure resources to the uh, seed plane, and then the Kubernetes is ready. So it takes around five minutes at the moment to, to spawn a new cluster. So it's not optimized and it heavily depends on the underlying infrastructure. So when your infrastructure is slow, it will take a long time to spawn the cluster. Then you have a an, an fast infrastructure, it will take only a few seconds or minutes. So we try to, to optimize it, um, but yeah, you have a little overhead um, to, to spawn the first the network and then the router and then maybe you add a load balancer to it and, and so on and so on. Yeah, but I think this way it's um, um, possible to, um, yeah, spawn a lot of Kubernetes cluster on, on an infrastructure without um, um, caring um, about the underlying infrastructure in the end because everything is um, consolidated in extensions. You can add new infrastructures when they're not yet supported. For example, we added the Hetzner Cloud extension um, so that it's not possible to run a Kubernetes cluster on um, Hetzner Cloud as well. And it's not a big deal to, to add further extensions there. Yeah. So thank you um, for being here and for your time. Um, yeah.